In India, the most ancient records of spiritual self-discovery can be found in the Vedas. The Vedic seers boldly declared that behind the many forces of nature worshipped by man, there is one self, one being, one consciousness, one existence. And we are one with that greater self, immortal and deathless behind the multiplicity of forms. This experiential realization was accessible to anyone who was willing to embark upon the path of self-discovery. And the seekers who had arrived at such a self-realization were called the Rishis. They guided the destiny of people their kings, kingdoms, and the growth towards larger empires. They laid the foundations of Indian culture. But how old are the Vedas? The orthodox scholars position it around 1500 BCE. But the Vedic Rishis speak of themselves as new seers and refer back to their own ancient seers who preceded them and found the path to self-realization. This makes it difficult to clearly demarcate the time period of the Vedic age and the antiquity of its systems of knowledge. The Vedic experience was orally transmitted across generations, encoded as mantras. Sri Aurobindo refers to this ancient mantric language as Deva Bhasha, in which the creative power of the word was central. The Rishis were the discoverers of the Vedic mantras. They did not intellectually compose them. They discovered the flame of aspiration, the Agni, arising from their innermost depths and gave it utterance in life as mantras. The rhythmic words of immense transformative power, an utterance that was one with the innate processes of nature. This Agni, this flame of aspiration, was not only within themselves, but they saw it everywhere in nature. Carrying forward a mysterious process of evolution in nature towards higher ranges of consciousness. Following the ascending path of Agni, they could discover and open to the descending power of Indra, of a divine mind above. And with it, the immense powers of self-transformation, a process that was at once a journey and a battle, ascending to higher planes of existence and receiving into themselves greater powers of consciousness.
beyond the material nature. They mapped the seven planes of consciousness. It is in the Vedas we find the earliest references to the supermind, the Mahas or the Vijnana, or in Sri Aurobindo's modern language, the truth consciousness. It was this plane of consciousness that linked the formless oneness above and the world of forms and multiplicity below. It was the dynamic foundation of oneness and multiplicity of creation held together in a vast harmony of truth consciousness. They mapped the ascending pathways to this sun world. It was their psycho-spiritual process of self-discovery and self-transformation. A process they referred to as Yajna. A universal process of evolutionary transformation in nature. at once subjective and objective, which brought not only spiritual wealth, but also material wealth and abundance. Their knowledge was encrypted in the living symbols of their mantric language, accessible only to those who were psychologically fit to handle the immense powers that it gave them. The mantras revealed their true meanings and powers only to those who could evolve to become the seers themselves. For the rest of the society, these mantras and yajnas remained as a means of gaining material prosperity. It was the age of intuition in India. The age of mysteries. The earliest dawn of spiritual awakening and evolutionary transformation of human nature. In course of time, already by 800 BCE, the original Vedic knowledge was largely lost. The outer forms of Yajna, which grew in complexity of symbols and rituals, veiled the deeper spiritual knowledge. We can see that Yaska, the ancient lexicographer who lived before Panini, counts more than 400 antique words of which he did not know the meaning. This loss of Vedic knowledge led to a powerful movement of revival in the form of the Brahmanas and the Upanishads. The Brahmanas focused on conservation of the forms of Vedic Yajna. They labored to fix and preserve every detail of the Vedic ceremony, the conditions of their material effectuality and purpose of their different parts and movements. On the other hand, the Upanishad sought the revelation of the soul of Veda. They sought to recover the lost or waning knowledge by meditation and spiritual experience. They were seekers of a higher than verbal truth. and used words merely as suggestions 
for the illumination towards which they were striving. The Vedic word was a seed of thought and vision by which they recovered old truths in new forms. What they found? They expressed in other terms, more intelligible to the age in which they lived. Thus, the eternal knowledge enshrined in the Vedas was brought forth and restated as the knowledge of Brahman, the central idea of the Upanishads. Their real work was to found Vedanta rather than to interpret the Veda. The word Vedanta is nowadays often used as if it meant the end of Veda. But it means the culmination of the rediscovery of Vedic experience and giving them a new form in a more modern language based on the inner realizations of great rishis like Yajna Valkya and Janaka. While a large number of Upanishads emerged over many centuries, the ten most ancient Upanishads are considered as the primary source. These primary Upanishads themselves have always been known as the original Vedanta. They are at once the flowering and ending of the great age of intuition in India. The Vedantic seers bridged the ancient mystic tradition of the Vedas with the coming age of reason in India. The immense work done in this period became the firm bedrock and perennial source of inspiration for Indian spirituality. It formed the young soul of Indian culture with a profound spiritual turn that would continuously unfold her mission for the next 2500 years.